Hi everyone, Christina here. Welcome to another card video at my YouTube channel and blog. Today I'm going to be doing a card using a new stamp set from the Entangled, but before we get to that, I have a little bit of housekeeping and it has to do with giveaways, so I know you guys are going to want to hear this information. If you have been following me on Instagram stories or at Facebook, you may have already seen this, but for those of you who are strictly at YouTube or you just missed the announcement, I'm changing how I'm doing giveaways. I would like to be able to just do random giveaways throughout the month, not always have it announced or whatever, just random giveaways to you guys. So I'm going to have you guys fill out a form every month and that keeps your address up to date. And then when I have a, a bag of goodies or a box of goodies, some craft crafting supplies to send off to you, then I can just email you and say, hey, watch your mailbox. You've got some fun stuff coming your way. And then that's it. It's just an easier way to simplify the giveaway process. And this also gives me the opportunity to update my list of mail art addresses. So if you would like your address to be considered for mail art, meaning your address will be shown on an envelope, it will be in a video, it will be on Instagram, it's public, everyone will see it. If you're okay with that, and I'll still mail the envelope to you as well, um, you can click yes and you'll be have your address not only for the giveaway but also considered for mail art and if you would rather not do that no problem at all just click no and you will still be entered into the giveaways so I'm gonna have a new giveaway form every month so October 1st there will be a new form I'll just update the the link down below in the video description and you can click over and enter the giveaways for the month of October so hopefully this just makes it a little bit easier for me to keep track of giveaways and more regularly send out goodie boxes and clean out my craft room so that'll help me a lot so back to today's card. Sorry for that long intro. Um, back to today's card. I have a card using the new Neat and Tangled Stamp Timber Collaboration Set. And just like the one from Concord and Ninth, this is a limited edition, limited quantity set. So if you really love this stamp set and it's dang cute, you might want to uh, really jump on that right away and get your stamp set while you can. Because once it sells out, it's not coming back in stock. It's just a one-time thing. So I did some watercoloring and I built a little scene with the critters and the Christmas lights and I also show you a really simple way of doing a forest background. I think it's pretty simple anyway. It looks complicated but it's definitely not. It's just a few steps and I really hope you enjoy. So here is that stamp set from Neat and Tangled. It is called Holiday Helpers and it has a lot of little elements you can put together to create a fun Christmas scene. So today I'm going to be not focusing on the snowman. Instead, I'm going to have the critters uh, stringing up Christmas lights, and I'm gonna be doing the whole scene in watercolor. So I'm starting out with some Arches watercolor paper. I've cut it to four and a half by five and three quarters. That'll give me a little bit of extra space to tape my uh, scene to a board. And then I took images from the stamp set and I sort of rough stamped my design. I'm going to be doing some really precise stamping. So I wanted to be able to move these around and get them just right so that I, when I go to stamp, I can have all the elements in the correct place. So I've pieced these all together and adhered them down to another piece of scratch paper. And I'm going to use this design here as a guide. So and I'm going to take that watercolor paper and put it inside my Misty stamp positioning tool. And the first thing I'm going to do is make a mask for the mouse on the left. As you can see, that mouse will eventually look like he's being held up by the bear. And because of that, I have to do a little bit of creative masking. So when I go to stamp the actual mouse, I'm going to put the stamp over that guide get it positioned just right, and then I can close the door of my Misty and transfer the stamp to the door. Then I'm gonna go over to the other side and I'm taking note of the area that will be behind the bear's arm, which I'm gonna color in for you. The only part that's gonna be behind the arm is the mouse's tail. So instead of masking off the tail on the actual stamp piece, I'm going to mask it on the stamp and then remove it after I ink up the stamp here. So I've got some blue post-it tape, or I'm sorry, some blue masking tape, and I'm just gonna place that over that little tail area. And then I'm gonna go ahead and ink up that stamp with some versifying onyx black ink. Now, if you don't want to use this tape technique here, you could obviously just use your fingertips and rub the ink off the tail. That might be even a little bit easier. But for me, this is what I decided to do. I would just stamp it without the tail being inked up. So I only stamped it once. I figure I can go over the lines later with the black pen. 
So for the mouse mask, I had to cut off the tail because I did want the bear's arm to stamp over that area. So I removed the mouse's tail for the mask and then put the mask over the already stamped mouse. And this just protects that interior area of the mouse design so that when I stamp the bear over the top that the lines don't intersect. So now I'm going to place my guide over my piece here and I'll line up that bear stamp directly over the top. And then I'll transfer the bear stamp to my misty door and then stamp that down after I've inked it up. So I'm going to go ahead and stamp the other little mouse that's on the other side of my scene here. And I also created a mask for him because the cut log, the tree stump, is going to be right below him. And it needs to look like he's standing on the tree stump. So technically, I only needed to have his feet masked off because it was just the very tip of his feet that were intersecting with the with the tree stump but I went ahead and did the whole thing because then I save these masks on the back of my stamp set and then if I need to use them later I have them. So once I remove those masks you can see it makes it look like the mouse on the left is being held up by the bear and the other mouse is standing on top of the tree stump. To finish off some of these lines and also to darken up some of that first mouse stamp, I'm just using a black waterproof pen. This is a Pilot Envelope Addressing Pen. I really love this pen. You guys have seen me use it over and over and over again. I also darkened up the bear's nose since this was stamped on watercolor paper and it's textured. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to actually protect the areas of these images with some drying gum. This is a liquid masking fluid and I'm actually going to use this paintbrush here that I prepped with a little bit of soapy water. That's just going to protect the bristles of the brush while I'm painting because otherwise when you're painting with this drying gum it can really like the name suggests, gum up your brush and it ruins the brush. So even though this is a very inexpensive, cheap brush, I do want to reuse it again someday. So I did prep the brush with a little bit of soapy water. I just put a little bit of soap on the brush and kind of lathered it up under some running water. And then as I pick up some of this drying gum and paint it on, it's going to just slide right off that brush and I don't have any problems. So it's nice and clean. Once I'm done, I just swish my brush in some water and it's nice and clean. So I did transfer that drying gum to a smaller dish just so that I could have the big bottle closed up tight while I was painting and then I can just put that extra drying gum back in the bottle. So after this was completely dry, I'm going to start painting my background. So the first thing that I wanted to do when I painted this background with the, with the forest and the trees was I wanted to create the sky that would go behind the trees. So I'm going to do a gradient wash where the darkest shade is at the ground level, at the horizon. So I'm bringing in a really, really dark color. Um, I'm not sure what this color is. It's not a black. It might be Payne's Gray. Um, it's in my palette and I don't have it labeled right now, but um, I'm bringing in a really intense dark color. And I've added that at full strength right at the horizon line. And then I'm dipping my brush in water and bringing it back over to my project and extending the color out because I want this color to fade. I also have my board tipped up so that gravity can help that color kind of move toward the bottom and get a nice smooth blend. So I'm going to hit this with my heat tool and you can see that it has kind of like a nice hazy look. I want this to look like it's almost dusk, not quite full night, but a little more dusky so that the lights that they're uh, holding up are lit up a little bit. So as far as the trees go, you want to start with the vertical line for the trunk and then you sort of just move from side to side painting little blobs. <laughs> it's hard to describe, but that's how I do it. I just move from side to side, making sure I have some space between the different branches. And then also that the branches sort of spread out at the bottom to create that traditional, more triangular pine tree shape. So I'm going to paint in a few more trees here. I'm going to show you some more examples of painting the trees. It really is just blobs with your paintbrush. You want it to look really random and sporadic. And you also want to vary the spacing in between your trees. You don't want it to look like these trees were planted by someone, if that makes sense. You want it to look really random. So these trees are just in a cluster. Um, you don't want it to look like someone has 
well, maybe you do when you paint your trees, but I didn't want like perfectly lined up trees. So at this point, as I started painting more toward the center of the card, I wanted to lighten up that shade that I'm painting with because I realized I wanted to have some lighter trees in the background and then I could paint darker trees um, right on top after it's dry. So I'm gonna paint in just a couple more trees here and I'm diluting my paint a little bit so that it's a little bit lighter than the first trees that I painted. And hopefully you can see the difference there. Once it's dry, you definitely can. So over here, I painted on even lighter trees um, coming here toward the center. I think if I was to paint this scene again, I would probably start with just a few of these lighter trees going all the way across. But the nature of watercolor is that the color does vary a little bit. So it worked out okay, not a problem. I'm gonna do some lighter trees here in the center. And after I have these trees completely painted in the center area, I'm going to dry the entire area. I wanna make sure that it's completely dry before I come in with my darker trees. So I use my heat tool just to speed up the drying process, but you could definitely let this air dry. And then I came in with that full strength of color again, because I want these trees that are in front to be really dark and to stand out on top of these lighter trees. So you can see how it's much darker than the shade behind it. I'm trying to create layers of trees so that these trees look like they're um, closer to us than the lighter trees in the background. So I forgot to mention, um, if you're unfamiliar with masking fluid, um, that's the gray kind of paint that I put on top of the animals. Masking fluid is almost like a rubber layer over the top of those areas, and that prevents the watercolor that I'm painting on top from seeping down into the paper. So after it was completely dry, I can then go in and remove all of that drying gum or masking fluid. I'm just using an adhesive eraser to help me pick this up, but you could definitely just rub your fingers over the surface and it will start to roll off that area. So you can see that those critters are all ready to be painted. So I'm actually going to turn on some music and speed up the painting process here. I've got a nice Christmas song for you guys to listen to. I know it's September, but this is a Christmas card, so I'm going to bring out the Christmas music. I hope you guys enjoy. When everything is white, glimmering silver white, Stillness fills the night, it's Christmas A winter wonderland, a snowball in each hand Take me away, Christmas Day There's joy in the air, families near We give thanks for this Past year, oh, nothing compares to the love that we share. Oh, what a bliss! A green, red delight with glimmering silver white. You dazzle us all from big to small. Warm laughter and white smiles My presents stacked in piles Take me away, Christmas Day
green red delight with glimmering silver wine you dazzle us all from big to small warm laughter and white smiles my presence stacked in pies take me away Christmas day take me away Christmas day So after all of the painting and kind of going over those lines again since I did use some white gouache and painted over them to have to reinforce those lines I was left with a dilemma the greeting that I had stamped on the card was intersecting with that horizon line and I even painted the horizon line down a little farther and I just wasn't happy with how it was looking. So I decided to fix the area that I would stamp over the top directly over where that greeting was already stamped in Versamark ink and then apply some silver embossing powder. Then I'm going to take a paintbrush and I'm going to add more of that really, really dark color and bring it down to right below that first line of the greeting. And that's going to make sure that this uh, warmest wishes is very legible because it's that silver embossing pattern on top of a dark background. So this was a way to just kind of salvage that whole area. I then trimmed down the whole watercolor piece um, so that it was slightly smaller than a standard size card. Speaking of the card, for the card base I'm using some Nina Classic Crest Solar White cardstock. This is the 110 pound version, so it's nice and sturdy. And I just scored that at five and a half to create a side folding card. Then put some foam adhesive on the back of my watercolor piece, and then press that down right onto the card front. So I hope you guys enjoyed this kind of forest watercolor background. Go ahead and try it. I think it's a super fun way to finish off a scene. I hope you enjoyed that card today. I think the scene turned out so adorable. Thank you so much for watching. And like I've said in previous videos, if you would love to see more videos like this, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and hit that notification bell that makes sure that you never miss a video like this again. And if you loved this video, give it a big thumbs up. That lets me know you liked it. On screen right now, I've got two more Christmas cards for you. I think this is my first Christmas card of the year. I could be wrong, but it's September. Christmas is coming fast. I know it seems like it's a few months away, but it will be here before we know it. So I've got two Christmas cards down below. Hope you guys enjoy. Thank you so much for watching today's video, and I'll be back with another video very soon.